have um, a Sunway Medical Center uh, doing the presentation um, from our member, uh, Derek. Uh, he introduced himself before. Um, we will have Dr. Kang Kang Kien Ho, I hope that was more or less correct. Sorry for that. Uh, the pronunciation uh, later talking about this uh, topic. As usual, it will take uh, half an hour to 40 minutes. And uh, in the end, we have uh, a lot of time uh, for the Q&A until uh, 5.30 when we end the session. So please, uh, as always, note down your questions that you have. You can uh, put it in the chat or you can note it down for yourself and ask in the end, but please keep the mic uh, on mute at all times so the uh, presenter is not um, disturbed or bothered. Um, and then I would uh, like to hand over to um, Sunway Medical, to Vel, to do an um, uh, introduction of uh, Sunway Medical and also of the uh, speaker uh, of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Patrick, uh, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Before we proceed with uh, uh, with the presentation, the talk by Dr. King, we will just give a brief introduction about our hospital. Just a quick one, yeah. So we are actually from Subway Medical Center Velocity. We are the latest addition to Subway Healthcare Group. So it's a six ten story building. Uh, it's a buildup of 240 beds with the total of about um, 27 clinics. Yeah, so we are actually uh, located at this township called Sunway Velocity and it's very much at the border of Churras and Kuala Lumpur. I'm sure some of you, some of the BOC members have um, had, uh, actually visited our hospital. So yes, thank you for supporting us. Um, so this is actually another view of the township. One of our differentiator is um, our hospital is located in a township where there is a mall, there is a hotel, which is very much uh, convenient to, especially to our outstation patients or health travelers. For instance, let's say we are back to our normal seat. Um, say if you are sending your family for a health check, you know, while waiting for them, you can actually, you know, walk over to the mall to do some shopping or grocery shopping, or, you know, some of the outstation uh, patients, they, the family can actually check in, stay uh, in our Sunbay Hotel, which is just next to our hospital. So this is uh, definitely a plus point for our hospital. Yeah. So last year, I'm sure it's a very challenging year for every one of us. And um, very fortunate and unfortunately that we are actually born for Sunway Medical Center Velocity, we are born in a COVID era. So we are nearly two years old. So last year, uh, despite the pandemic, we, we actually managed to um, do whatever we can to offer our, open our doors and, and provide services to our patients. So over the last year, we managed to get all the panelship from um, the main main uh, insurance provider, as you can see here, hang on, uh, let me show my pointer. AIA is already in with us. We have Attica, GE, Prudential, and even Allianz. So all the major insurance and TPA is already in with us. And um, last year, we managed to launch a weight management center. This is um, championed by uh, our team, where we have a surgical and non-surgical approach. If uh, a lot of the uh, health travelers, especially or like Australian or American, some of them, they are obese, they will usually opt for this surgical approach called bariatric surgery. So it's available in our hospital and we are seeing few of them, you know, even during pandemic. They actually travel ac across the country to seek treatment in our hospital. Yeah, so this is under weight management center. We have a heart and lung center as well. And uh, we also just launched our Velocity Neuro Center. So we actually have a neurologist and also a neurosurgeon in, in the team. So basically we are, from here, uh, we are quite a tertiary setup, uh, providing a multidisciplinary um, services to all. So this is an overview. Like I said, uh, we are built for 240 beds, a 10 story building. Uh, we have a cat lab. Cat lab is um, where we are able to see if there's any blockage in our heart, 
and we even have dialysis center, chemo day ward, uh, critical, we have in total about 12 critical care beds and uh, digestive health service and we have six operating theaters. So this is an overview of our facility. And of course, um, because seeing that we are a new hospital, whatever machines that we are invested in is all one of the latest one, like our CT scan. It is fast enough that we can even do a CT angio, right? And our MRI machine uh, in other places is usually about 1.5, 1.8. Yeah, so ours is actually three Tesla. So, so this one it actually provides a, a sharper image and also reduce in the scanning time. Yeah, so these are all the diagnostic machines that we have. And yes, like I said, our hospital is uh, backed by a multidisciplinary team. So meaning we actually offer more than 30 specialties in our hospital. So you see from ONG, neurosurgery, nephrology, this is kidney health, auto, orthopedic. So probably we can uh, team up, uh, collaborate with one of your members just now, Mr. Michael, <laughs> the one that provided the hyaluronic acid, yeah gastro, ENT, emergency medicine, and even heart health. Yep. Probably we can share some of our information uh, via our website link yeah, later, so if you can browse it through. So these are some of the facilities pictures that we have. Okay, moving on. And uh, of course, we have single bedded, double bedded, four bedded, and a BVIP suite for our patients. So before I end my presentation, I'd like to share an accident and emergency video of ours. What would you do when the unexpected happens to you? When life throws you a curveball you weren't ready to face? It is times like this where a split second can make a big difference. In that split second is when we want to be in safe hands in the hands of those who are prepared to go above and beyond. In the hands of Sunway Medical Center Velocity's Accident and Emergency Department. Built around a team of qualified professionals and a state-of-the-art facility and medical equipment. We are ready to take on any given challenge that would come our way. To provide you with the medical care you need. With every possible help there is. While extending our care to your loved ones too. For us, it's more than a job. We get to see beautiful moments unfold between families. Moments that truly give meaning to life. We promise you we will provide equal dedication and care to all walks of life till the very end. So, let us be the reason for you to have a healthier today and a better tomorrow. Because for you to have a fulfilling life means the world to us. Sunway Medical Center Velocities Accident and Emergency Department. Your health is our mission. Okay, thank you everyone. The key message that I'd like to share with everyone here is that it is very important for us to know the nearest hospital nearby your, where you are at, to know what services that they can do, uh, the team, uh, the facility that they have. Because, you know, when it, especially when it comes to medical emergency like heart attack or stroke, you didn't want to end up in the hospital where they are unable to to treat this condition. And then, you know, you have to be referred, transferred to another hospital. So time is really critical when it comes to this. So yes, um, our hospital, uh, we, are, we are ready for any medical or even surgical emergency. 
So that is all from my end. I shall uh, hand it over to Dr. Kim to continue with this topic on the importance of COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Kim. I'm a doctor from uh, the Accident and Emergency Department, Samway Medical Center, Velocity. Uh, today, I'm going to share some information about the importance of vaccinations, especially this uh, regarding this COVID vaccines. So uh, at the end of the sharing, then uh, you may ask me questions, whichever that you think uh, important for you. Okay. Here is uh, what you need to know about COVID-19 vaccines. Getting vaccinated is one of the most crucial steps in protecting yourself and your loved ones from COVID-19. It is also to achieve herd immunity for the greater good. Okay, what is a COVID-19 vaccine? Uh, this COVID-19 COVID vaccines helps our bodies to develop immunity against COVID-19 virus by stimulating our immune system to fight this uh, virus whenever we are exposed to it. There are uh, various platforms such as uh, RNA genetic sequencing, viral vectors, deactivating viruses, and protein subunits have been used to provide safe and effective coronavirus vaccines. It gives you the best protection against COVID-19. So uh, for now, the types of vaccines available are the Pfizer, Sinovac, and also the AstraZeneca. Why is this uh, COVID-19 vaccination important? It is uh, an important step to stop the pandemic. The benefits from the immunization program include it prevents someone from COVID-19 infection or becoming seriously ill due to COVID-19 and also to curb the spread of COVID-19 to others, and also to achieve herd immunity where a significant amount of the population is protected through vaccination against the virus, making it difficult for the disease to spread. So here are the things for consideration for taking medications before getting vaccinated. It is not recommended for you to take over-the-counter medicines such as uh, ibuprofen, aspirin, or acetaminophen before vaccination for the purpose of trying to prevent vaccine-related side effects. It is not known how these medications might affect how well the vaccine works. However, if you take these medications regularly for other reasons, you should keep taking them before you get vaccinated. It is also not recommended to take antihistamines before getting a COVID-19 vaccine to try to prevent allergic reactions. So if you have any questions about medications that you are taking, you, you can talk to your doctor or your vaccination provider at the center. So uh, there may be some people will ask uh, regarding the medical procedures or screenings that they are going to have or before or after vaccinations. So most of the procedures can be performed before or after getting a COVID-19 vaccine. These are the routine blood work, work, workout, dental procedures, scans, CT scans, ECG, stress tests, scopes, colonoscopies, ultrasounds, and other medical uh, exams. It can be done before or after getting the vaccine. So uh, information about the COVID-19 vaccines, you can help protect yourself and also the people around you by getting vaccinated. Studies show that the COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Vaccine 19, uh, COVID-19 vaccines help prevent severe illness. And also depending on the kind of COVID-19 vaccine you get, you might need a second shot three to four weeks after your first shot. So there are some possible side effects after getting a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, for example, uh, these side effects may affect your ability to do daily activities, but they should go away in a few days. Some people have no side effect at all. So here are the common side effects 
uh, for example, if on the arm where you got the shot, then you will feel pain, redness, swelling. If throughout the rest of your body, you may feel tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, fever, or nausea, feeling like one to vomit or even vomit. So here are some helpful tips to relieve side effects. First, talk to your doctor about taking the over-the-counter medicine, such as uh, all these medications. You can, get, you can take these medications to relieve post-vaccination side effects if you have no other medical reasons that prevent you from taking these medications normally. It is not recommended for you to take these medicines before vaccination for the purpose of trying to prevent side effects. So here you can do uh, to reduce the pain and uh, discomfort where you got the shot, you can apply a clean, cool, wet washcloth over the area or use or exercise your arm. The, the arm that after the vaccine, you can exercise it so, so that can reduce the discomfort sensation. Uh, to reduce discomfort from fever, you need to drink plenty of fluids and rest lightly. So if you receive a second shot of the vaccine, the side effects after your second shot may be more intense than the first one. These side effects are normal signs that your body is building protection and should go away within a few days. So it's okay to have that kind of sensation or feeling. When to call the doctor? In most cases, Discomfort from pain or fever is a normal sign that your body is building protection. So, but if the redness or tenderness where you got the shot get worse after 24 hours, or if the side effects are worrying you or do not seem to be going away after a few days, then you should contact the, the doctor and consult further. So for COVID-19 vaccines for people with allergies, an allergic reaction is considered severe when a person needs to be treated with the epinephrine or if the person must go to the hospital. Experts refer to severe allergic reactions as anaphylaxis. We call it as anaphylaxis. So an immediate allergic reaction happens within four hours after getting vaccinated and could include symptoms such as uh, hives, swelling, and wheezing. Uh, meaning the respiratory distress of a, of a patient. So if you are allergic to other types of vaccines, if you have had an immediate uh, allergic reaction, even if it was not severe, to a vaccine or injectable therapy for another disease, ask your doctor if you should get a COVID-19 vaccine. Your doctor will help you decide if it is safe for you to get vaccinated. If you have allergies not related to vaccines, the CDC recommends that people get vaccinated even if they have a history of severe allergic reactions not related to vaccines or injectable medications, such as food, pet, random environmental or latex allergies. People with a history of allergies to oral medications or a family history of severe allergic reactions may also get vaccinated. So uh, what to do if you have an allergic reaction after getting a COVID-19 vaccine? So if you have a severe allergic reaction, also known as an anaphylaxis, after getting the first shot of the COVID-19 vaccine, the CDC recommends that you not get a second shot of that vaccine. If the reaction was after an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine, then you should not get a second shot of this vaccine. An allergic reaction is considered severe when a person needs to be treated with epinephrine or EpiPen, or if they must go to the hospital. Anyhow, just speak to your doctor regarding this uh, vaccine if severe allergic reaction happens. So if you have a non-severe allergic reaction uh, to this uh, vaccine, also similar, 
Then uh, for this anaphylaxis, it only happens to a small number of people uh, after vaccination, but this is rare. It can occur after any vaccination. If this occurs, vaccination providers have medicine available to effectively and immediately treat the reactions. After the COVID-19 vaccine, you will be asked to stay for 15 to 30 minutes so that you can be observed in case you have severe allergic reaction and need immediate treatment at the vaccination center itself. So here are some frequently asked questions about COVID-19 vaccination. So who can take the COVID-19 vaccines? It's actually for now, all individuals 18 years and above. However, uh, some community groups need further consideration for the acceptance of this vaccination. For example, like uh, individuals with severe allergies, COVID-19 positive individuals, individuals with immune system problems. And uh, currently, most of the clinical trials conducted are for volunteers age 18 and above. So some vaccine companies will conduct clinical trials on children. Therefore, the government will consider the use of COVID-19 vaccine in children when there is scientific data that proves that its uh, effectiveness and safety to this group of people. For women who are pregnant or breastfeeding, do consult with your doctor if you should be vaccinated. So another question is that, should I get vaccinated if I have or had COVID-19? The answer is yes, according to CDC. This is because experts do not yet know how long someone is protected from getting sick again after recovering from the COVID-19. So how many doses are required for COVID-19 vaccine? So for now, most vaccines require two doses. For vaccines that require two doses, every individual will get a vaccine of the same type. How long should I wait to get second COVID-19 vaccine shot? So the duration of receiving the second dose will depend on the type of vaccine allocated. The interval between the first and second dose of COVID vaccine types uh, below are as follow. For Spicer, the Sputnik vaccine will be about 21 days. AstraZeneca vaccine will be about 4 weeks to 12 weeks. Then Sinovac vaccine will be about 14 days. Is there any difference? Is there a difference between the first and second dose vaccine doses? Uh, both doses are the same. However, two shots are required to be fully uh, effective. So another question is that why are second doses of vaccines necessary? The vaccination goal is to develop a maximum number of antibodies in our body system to protect us from someone who has COVID-19. So the second dose gives us the most protection from becoming seriously ill and or hospitalized due to COVID-19. So what do we need to do after receiving the vaccine? The vaccines protect against symptomatic forms of COVID-19, but it is still unclear whether they will stop the spread of COVID-19 virus or not. So therefore, you should continue to take appropriate precautions in protecting yourself and others around you, even after receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. If you are experiencing pain or discomfort after getting vaccinated, speak with your doctor about taking over-the-counter medicine to relieve pain and discomfort. So can someone still get COVID-19 after vaccination? Though it is unlikely, but people may still spread and even develop COVID-19 after getting vaccinated. So uh, everyone will still have to be very cautious. How long does immunity last after COVID-19 vaccination? So far, it's still unclear of how long the immunity will last as COVID-19 vaccines were only introduced in the late 2019. How long does it take to build immunity after getting the COVID-19 vaccine? According to CDC, it typically takes a few weeks 
for the body to build immunity. It's the protection against the virus that causes COVID-19 after vaccination. This also means that it's possible for a person to be infected with the virus just before or just after vaccination and still get sick. This is because the vaccine has not had enough time to protect, uh, provide protection yet. So is the vaccine safe? Yes, all the vaccine approved by the National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Division for use in Malaysia are safe and effective. The NPRA is the body responsible for evaluating vaccines to be registered in Malaysia. So far, the COVID-19 vaccine for Malaysia has been given conditional approval based on strict compliance with the assessment of scientific, clinical, and technical data. The Drug Control Authority, PBKD, will approve the use of the vaccine for Malaysia based on the results of the NPRA assessment. Efficacy of COVID-19 vaccine and why is it different? The efficacy of a vaccine or how well the vaccine works is seen through its ability to protect individuals from the symptoms of COVID-19 through vaccination. The efficacy level varies according to the way clinical studies are conducted, the type of vaccines, the risk of disease in volunteers and various other factors. Although the efficacy level varies, WHO has prescribed that the minimum level of efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccine is 50%. All vaccines approved by NPRA are safe and efficacious for use in Malaysia. So here are the side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine. Mostly are pain, swelling, weakness at the injection site, tiredness, headache, chills, joint pain, fever, nausea, feeling unwell, swelling of the lymph nodes or other side effects that may be reported from time to time. Will this vaccine provide 100% cure? So not, not all vaccines can and will provide 100% cure to any diseases, not only this COVID-19 COVID vaccine, but all the vaccines. So will individuals who obtain the vaccine still be able to transmit the disease? Uh, the vaccine will enhance the individual, individual's antibody, hence they are less likely to contract or transmit the disease. Is it safe for pregnant mothers to be vaccinated? So in Malaysia, pregnant mothers are not excluded from the vaccination program. They are advised to take the first dose of, of vaccine from week 14 to 33 weeks of pregnancy. For women who are pregnant or breastfeeding, uh, do consult with your, with your doctor if you should be vaccinated. However, please note that the Malaysian government only allows Pfizer vaccination if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Should I get COVID-19 while I'm breastfeeding? Is it safe for me and my baby? Currently, there's no evidence to prove adverse effect of breastfeeding for newborn babies. However, this is subjected to the mutual decision between the mother and the ONG consultant. So again, the same thing for the uh, whoever pregnant or breastfeeding, please consult with your doctor first before you uh, decide whether you should be vaccinated. Okay, so uh, any questions? Uh, okay, thank you very uh, much, doctor, for uh, this presentation. I think it, uh, it answers a lot of questions also. Uh, very insightful. Um, I, I take the, the privilege of the first question, um, <laughs> then I hand over uh, to the other guys. Um, for me, um, an interesting thing that came up uh, in the last few days or weeks was like this cross-vaccination. Uh, you just mentioned before in Malaysia, there will be only uh, same vaccination given. But I read a couple of um, uh, information in Switzerland um, 
the, where where they said that now they can take different vaccinations and it looks like the efficacy is far higher than if you take the same is that is that something you know about or is it true first and second is there still a possibility to have that in malaysia well now uh, in malaysia we are not allowed to choose uh, types of vaccines at the moment i mean the, the brand of the vaccine at the moment so uh, there's also uh, insufficient data scientific data to support on the the claim Mm -hmm. since to on uh, on the same person but i think it's possible if there's a su sufficient scientific data to support on this uh, efficacy of uh, using different brands vaccines in the future but for now we we are only uh, given two doses of the same types of uh, vaccines Okay, good. Thank you very much. Um, anyone has questions, please unmute yourself, ask the question and mute again, or just type your question in the chat so I can read it. Doctor, actually sometimes the, the symptoms or the effects of the vaccine can be after four, five days. Four, five weeks. Days, days. Four, five days. days after the jab, right? Onwards. Like uh, body aches, muscle pain. <laughs> this is weird because I never had like thigh pain and then when I get up one morning on the fifth day, uh, I walk, I was sleeping. I will try to kick it off. It doesn't work. <laughs> Usually this kind of uh, side effects, it lasts uh, a few days. If four or five days is considered quite uh, rare. Like... No, no, not, not last four or five days. It started <laughs> after the fourth or fifth day after the jab. Yes, some, some may happen. But... Uh, it could be also due to some different reasons. So, for example, like uh, you know, too, too, taking too less of uh, fluids or uh, lack of access or maybe because of the vaccine itself also possible. Mm. But if you feel and you, you can try to start taking some uh, painkillers, then you can see how it goes. If it's ah. not moving, then probably have to, need to get a check first from the doctors to see how your blood pressure, your temperature, your heart rate, whether it's normal or not. You know, just just to be safe. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Daniel, I think for your case, it's called aging. <laughs> really? Uh. <laughs> Still young. Uh. Right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Can I ask a question, so the doctor? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. uh, I just now I saw on the uh, about this exact exact is four to twelve weeks, right? The interval. Yeah. Uh, mm. So, uh, but what is uh, what, what is currently uh, in practice? Are they are they going to fix on twelve weeks or or can it be early? Uh, so far in. Sure, as far as I know, they are giving uh, in a 12 weeks uh, gap. For so not, not earlier? Uh, for now, no. In other countries, I heard is uh, there is a bit earlier. So it depends on the authority uh, to, to arrange on this uh, second dose schedule, actually. Okay. Uh, another question is... Uh... Yeah, uh, uh, we were saying about uh, who's vaccinated for them to uh, to get uh, again is it will be lower, right? Yes. Uh, and for those, of course, there are still certain percentage is read from the reports, uh, even though they were vaccinated, but yet uh, they still got infected. Yes. So, those infected uh, and vaccinated uh, person, you know, would they would they spread the virus uh, if they were to be infected? You know, you, you, you got my question, Sota? Oh, okay, so <clears throat> for those uh, vaccinated, uh, there is still possibility of these uh, people get infected. Uh, some because uh, after the second dose, 
they got exposed to COVID-19 virus too early before the body managed to develop the immune system. So these people, even though they have, they completed two doses of a vaccine, but their body is not uh, fully immune yet. So that's why they get infected uh, in this uh, situation. Or some, even they completed two doses, they have a, a few weeks or even one, two months of uh, time for the body to develop the immune system. They may still get infected, but uh, in this kind of patients, they may have milder symptoms, meaning those who never get infect, uh, vaccinated, probably they will get into a very serious condition where they may die or they may turn up to be a ICU patient. They, they may go into ICU with the multi-organ uh, failure, those kind of uh, condition. But if they get vaccinated, there's a possibility of their illness, severity of their illness get lesser, milder. So in this uh, situation, it's still very good for us to get vaccinated instead of not vaccinated. Then regarding whether these vaccinated people will spread the illness to others or not, uh, better we uh, treat them as it's possible for them to spread to others. We just continue the precautions uh, measures so that uh, everyone get in, uh, vaccinated, everyone still practice the uh, SOP and also the hygiene, those kind of uh, safety measures so that we can uh, reduce the possibility of the infections to spread to others. Uh, Dr. King, if I may just quickly yes. add in here. Yes. Uh, just to answer the question as well, for the hospital's procedure, yes. as long as you are um, COVID positive, whether are you vaccinated or not, the treatment and the precaution is the same. We take yes. it that you are infectious, you are yes. positive, yes. Uh, and you can spread to others. Yes. It is just a precaution to others. Okay, Dr. King. Yes. Um, I, I, I heard or read somewhere, I don't know how far it's true, that after the vaccination, uh, the immune may drop the early part after the vaccination, the immune may drop the first few days. It takes a while to build back up again. Mm. That's why uh, anyone who gets jabbed doesn't mean you can go and party, you know, because after yes. the jab, you stay away and even worse, it's, it's the first few days will be worse than before. Meaning you'll be weaker than no jab for the first few days. And then the immune will build up to about two weeks after the jab. Perhaps about optimum then, after two weeks. Yes. So, that's why I dare not even go out shopping if my wife's around. No, I asked her to do it. She knows, she quickly go and shop for me. Yes. So, so, so that's so, why the, the, the yeah, mindset must be correct and, and the awareness on this must be correct. So, uh, even after vaccinated, you just have to continue to practice the proper SOP. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Ah uh, yes. Uh, I observe. I observe that there are people who get uh COVID positive, but then they do not show any symptoms at all. Also, I see there are people in household, uh, or even in the dorm, in the factories, uh, whereby a lot of people get infected, but there are still some people that they don't get positive at all. Uh, is there any studies into these people, why, why their bodies actually behave differently? Uh, this depends, uh, sometimes depends on the body, the, the uh, one person's body immune system, whether they are strong enough to fight against this COVID-19 or not. And then uh, some probably the amount of viruses that they expose to is uh, not, not significant to produce enough uh, body response. So they don't show much uh, symptoms to the public. But anyhow, uh, the infectivity of this disease is very high, meaning if one person is uh, having this uh, virus, then it's very easily for this person to spread to others. So that's why we need to be very careful and uh, keep a social distancing among each other for the for now during this pandemic season. All right. 
um, doctor for yes. those who have, uh, I mean, who who took uh, radioactive iodine, right? Is there any brand of uh, the vaccination which is more recommended or not so good for? Uh, for the vaccine itself, if a patient is taking radioactive medication, uh, would be safe to consult with the treating doctor first to see if there's any other concern uh, despite the brand of the vaccine is to see whether is your body ready for the vaccines or not. Doctor, I have a question. They say now that for under a particular brand, Pfizer community, children below 13, 18 and to 13 can be vaccinated. Why is there suddenly a shift whether children can or cannot? Earlier they said above 18 only. Is it that the vaccine that they've come up with is different than the common vaccine that is allowed now? Oh, no. It's uh, because previously there's no sufficient data to support on this uh, on this trial on this group of patients. So currently it's just some, some countries, uh, I think it's the US that, that they are doing on uh, this right. to be, this group of people. But US for, and Europe uh, have tested on the... Yeah. So... Malaysia, we so far we don't have this yet, but they are considering once the data is sufficient to, to prove that it is safe for this group of people to get vaccinated, then probably our government will proceed with this uh, suggestion. So it's the same type of vaccine that the adults are taking? Yes, yes, it's the same. And recently, a few days ago, there was an article about AZ vaccine not covering certain things. Uh, does not prevent... Uh, I don't know the exact words, but I, I'm sure you've read it in some articles that have come out on the web where there's some problem with the AZ vaccine. Is there any truth in that? Or have you read about it? Uh, there are certain cases uh, reported as uh, severe complications uh, due to this uh, vaccine, but uh, the rate of happening is quite low compared to uh, those who are taking these vaccines and uh, compared to the benefits of taking this vaccine. So it is still uh, safe for us to take the vaccines actually. Thank you, Dr. Welcome. Dr. Kenga. Uh, yes. Dr. Kenga, yeah. Uh, I, I have always been asked, uh, I've always been asked by some of my friends, uh, I mean, including the members of BOC, that uh, after the vaccination is done, uh, what if they go for a COVID test? Will they come up with positive? Can you clarify that? Okay. Uh, usually the vaccination, after the vaccination is uh, done and completed, if they go for a COVID test, they will not get positive if they never exposed to the COVID, vac uh, COVID virus itself. The COVID vaccine itself, is, it only triggers the body immune system to develop antibodies to this virus. But the COVID-19 test, we are testing on the virus itself. If one person has never been uh, exposed to this virus before, the, body, the person's body should not have this virus at all. It only have the antibody towards this virus. So it's uh, two different things. Okay, great. Any more questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, you said like the symptoms after the second chap is mostly heavier or more severe than the first one. Um, but can we can we uh, safely assume that if you had no allergic um, reactions on the first, you will also not have it in the second? I mean, what what does it mean more severe? It's just like the first one you had headache, the second one you will have more headache. Or can it be completely different symptoms also? Yes, it's, it's just like this. You, you had a headache and then uh, the second shot probably more intense pain. That's all. But the allergy reaction, if during the first shot, you do, do not have any uh, allergy reaction, then the second shot of uh, vaccine, most likely you won't get any allergy reactions. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome. Anyone has uh, more questions? I would have one more, but I will. Well, I ask it first. So, so we know during uh, 
COVID time, we have uh, a lot of experts on, on vaccinations uh, throughout the world. Um, uh, experts that just suddenly pop up from somewhere. We don't know where they come from, but they know a lot of stuff. Um, my question will be, what is, how, how can we figure out what we read in the news is true and what is not so true. I mean, what is for you a good source of information that you recommend that we should consult just to figure out what is what is the facts? Uh, uh, <clears throat> for this, uh, you can always uh, refer to the uh, official websites of the government bodies, the health ministry, or you can consult to your family doctors for, for certain uh, for, for those questions that you think uh, not sure. Yeah, okay, as simple as that. Um, ministries, uh, government webpage uh, and uh, your private doctor, right? I mean, uh, Patrick, fake news, fake news is everywhere. You know, sometimes uh, we also hear very ridiculous stuff on the web and all this. So always go for the official uh, government uh, information. Uh, the, the, the other thing is, if you are really not sure, your family doctor will be able to advise you about that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for that. In, Kenny, you don't want to tell them about the Pfizer effect, is it, Kenny? Uh, Nothing much for me, right? just arm pain, fever, and, and, and pills, uh, but just for one you, day. You took the Pfizer or the AZ? Eh? I took AZ. I uh, cannot see so, Kenny's face. Uh. Where's Kenny? Oh, uh, Kenny. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Kenny, was, Kenny was a little bit upset because after my Pfizer shots, right, I played oh. all of my golf uh, with uh, oh, five pie and one body. So Kenny called it the Pfizer effect. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, Derek started with two really bad holes, but for the remaining 16, he was staying like a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, so what, what the doctor says is correct. After the first jab, not much impact. But after the second jab, the side effect is quite good. You can play a lot of golf. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, good. Um, last chance to ask a question. If not, then I, I would like to thank you, doctor, again for your time and pulling those uh, facts together, um, informing us about uh, the vaccination and um, yeah, the side effects and uh, whatever we need to, to really know to feel comfortable. Um, maybe you want to say some last words. Okay, here, here I'm going to share a video about uh, herd immunity. Just a general idea of this. Yeah, okay, thank you. What is herd immunity? Picture a community or herd of healthy people. An infectious disease would pass easily through the community from person to person. Vaccines train our immune system to protect us from diseases it hasn't come into contact with before. For example, the MMR vaccine provides immunity against measles, mumps and rubella. During an outbreak of a disease, vaccinated people will remain healthy. As they won't become infected, they won't pass the disease on. When most of the community is vaccinated, it makes it difficult for the disease to spread within the community. This is called herd immunity. If more people within the community remain unvaccinated, herd immunity can break down, allowing the disease to spread more easily. Herd immunity is especially important for individuals in the community who can't be vaccinated. For example, if they are too old, too young, or have weak immune systems. Okay, so just now uh, was the video about the herd immunity. So it is uh, to encourage everyone, especially your, yourself, your family members, your friends, or even your em employees who are uh, okay to get vaccinated, just go for vaccination.
Okay, so so that they can protect those who are not suitable for vaccination. Those who cannot go for vaccination, those are the ones that needed our protection to them. Okay, everyone? Do a presentation. Uh, please let me know so we can organize that. Uh, again, we try to do it every month and we try to give priority to those who have not had a session yet. Um, the other ones I will uh, revert back to them. Um, or the other way around, if you have a topic that is uh, burning that you really want to know about, what, that you want to know more about, please also let me know, make a suggestion. And uh, either we can find someone in uh, our group here that can talk about it, or we can find an external speaker if it's a topic we cannot cover. But I think currently we have quite a lot of people and in different industries. We should find uh, we should find a speaker. Yeah. So please uh, share. Um, let me know if you want to do so and what is um, yeah a convenient uh, slot for you over the next months. That's it from me. Daniel, closing words. Uh, I'd like to thank um, um, everyone here uh, for participating. First of all, Dr. King, uh, uh, Derek, uh, Derek Chan for organizing this. Derek is a CEO of Sunway uh, Velocity Medical Center, member of Peace and Cause. Uh, thanks for being uh, making this happen, everyone. I see you in the next uh, session, okay? Take care and stay safe. And please get vaccinated, all right? Get vaccinated. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.